Okay, in this video we're going to do some problems related to fractions and some related concepts here. Um, so just basic fraction review. One of the things we're going to use as a building block, or sometimes gets used as a building block here um, for fractions here, is we want to be able to find the prime factorization. Um, so to do that, um, what we're going to do, we're going to start with 12 here. So this is a whole number, and we're going to basically split this up into a bunch of whole numbers multiplied together as sort of small as we can, that is they're all primes. So the general setup I'm going to start with my 12, and I'm going to try and split this into two numbers that multiply to 12. So I'm going to choose 2 times 6. Then what I'm going to do is keep splitting these as many times as I can until they won't split anymore. So 2, 2 is prime, that means the only sort of whole number multiplication I can write to get 2 is 2 times 1, but we don't want any 1s. 6, we can split 6 up again as 2 times 3, and then when we're done, we have, well, you have a 2 there, a 2 there, and a 3 there. And so what that means is our prime factorization, the prime factorization will be 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3, which would then be, we could write as 2 squared times 3. Now, something to note here is I chose to write 12 as 2 times 6. Well, what if I chose to write this as 3 times 4? Well, then 3 won't split up anymore. 4 will. 4 is 2 times 2. What you'll notice here is that I get a 3, a 2, and a 2. So the idea of the prime factorization here is I should get sort of the same sets of numbers, or multi-sets of numbers. So I get two twos and one three here. No matter how I decide to split this up here, trees could even look quite different. So there's number 1. Our answer there, I'd write maybe 2 squared times 3. Part B, we're finding a prime factorization of 54. Same idea. What multiplies to 54? How uh, about 2 times 27? Uh, 27 would be 3 times 9. 9 would be 3 times 3. And then I count my leaves. My leaves. 2, 3, 3, 3. And so I have 27 equals 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Or a more efficient or more compact way to write that is 2 times 3 to the third. You just write that down. Right. Okay, next one. We've got 270. Getting a little bit less comfortable with sort of knowing factors of 270. What I'm going to focus on is this 0 at the end. And what that allows me to do is I can factor out a 0 and write this as 10 times 27. So anytime I end with a 0, I can factor out a 10, and then I get 27. And this prime factorization, one nice thing is I always get smaller numbers that are easier to work with, hopefully, or numbers hopefully I'm more familiar with. Now the 10, when I split that up, is 2 times 5. 27, I can do is 3 times 9. The 9 splits up as 3 times 7. And I look at what I'm going to call my leaves. It's the 2, the 5, and this 3, that 3, and that 3. And so what I get is 270 equals, let's see, we've got 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 5. I like to write these in increasing um, size here. You don't have to do that, really, but it's sort of a nice form. So I get 2 times 3 to the third, or 3 cubed, times 5. There's my prime factorization of 2. So. Okay, now on to fractions for real. Um, again, that's the prime factorization is something that sometimes you can use to simplify fractions um, as you go along. So let's start with, we've got two problems here. We want to simplify. Look at it, simplify 12 fifteenths, and then the second problem is 12 eighteenths. So with 12 fifteenths, here, um, what we'll see sometimes is you'll find people find prime factorization at the top, prime factorization at the bottom, cancel the common factors. I'd more suggest just trying to look for any common factor and make these smaller, and then there's sometimes ways to tell there are no more common factors. So in this case, when I look at 12 and 15, I've got to know my multiplication facts well enough to think 12, well that's 3 times 4, 15 is 3 times 5. So then I can cancel the 3's. And what I end up with is 4 fifths. So 12 fifteenths, let's make that cleaner, equals 4 fifths. So it's a simplified version. And 4 and 5 have no common factors other than 1. OK, the other one, 12 eighteenths, well, there's a few ways I could do this. 
One is I notice both of these are even. So 12 is 2 times 6. 18 is 2 times 9. And then I can sort of cancel the 2s and like multiply it out of 2 over 2, which is a 1. And so I get 6 ninths. But the thing is, 6 ninths has a common factor still. So I'm going to pull that out further. 6 I can split as 2 times 3. 9 I can write as 3 times 3. And then I can cancel the 3s. And I'm left with just 2 thirds. So 12 18 is 2 thirds. Okay, I'm going to do this one a couple other ways, the 12 18s. One way, you notice you cancel the 2 down here, and then you cancel the 3. Well, that means you could have canceled the 2 times 3 right away. That's 6. So anytime you cancel twice or simplify twice, you could have done that once with just the product of the two things you simplified here. Um, sometimes I'll actually simplify twice because I only see one of these right away. But it's probably a good idea to go back and try and become a little more efficient at this and realize, oh, this bigger number would work. So 2 times 3 is 6, so I can write 12 as 6 times 2, 18 as 6 times 3 here. And so what I get, I can cancel the 6s, and that gives me my 2 thirds. Okay. Another method that you could have used here is I could have done prime factorizations. So 12 is 2 times 6, 6 is 2 times 3, 12 is 2 squared times 3, 18 splits up as how about 3 times 6, 2 times 3, 18 is 2 times 3 squared. So that means I can write 12 18 as 12, and I'm going to write this as 2 times 2 times 3, over 18, I can write as 2 times 3 times 3. Now, sometimes, if you're not sure what to do, if you can find these prime factorizations, uh, it sort of lets you know something simplifies right away, because sort of, if anything simplifies, it would be a prime. So you cancel out the 3 and the 3, the 2 and the 2, and you're just left with 2 thirds here. So you get sort of 2 thirds in three sort of different ways. The one that I would probably actually try and shoot for is this one here. Um, if you can factor out a bigger thing, that helps out. And then I kind of worry about prime factorizations when I've got sort of big numbers and I don't know really if there's a factor. Um, but really, to be honest, you only need to fact do a prime factorization of either the top or bottom. Because if I knew, for instance, that I only had a 2 left here, the only thing that could cancel is a 3. here. So I don't really need to keep doing that. Okay. Now we're going to start doing some fraction um, operations. This one is 3 fifths multiplied by two-fifths, or sorry, three-fifths multiplied by two-sevenths. Now, fraction multiplication, the standard way this works is I multiply the tops, three times two, and my bottom or denominator is five times seven. So top is the numerator, bottom is the denominator, and what I get now is three times two is six, five times seven is 35, and my answer is just six three-fifths. So pretty straightforward there. Now, something a little more, well, it's going to look kind of the same, but it's probably a little more complicated, is 4 sevenths times 3 eighths. So this would be 4 times 3 over 7 times 8. Now, what you could do is you could say 4 times 3 is 12, 7 times 8 is 56. Um, let's make that back a little nicer. Now, we'll live with it. Uh, 12 over 56. But now you could simplify this. So this one, if I'm looking to simplify, I could cancel a 2. I can recognize that these are both even. So 2 times 6 over 2 times 28 will give me 56. But now 6 and 28 are both 2, or both even, so I can cancel another 2. 2 times 3 over 2 times 14. Cancel two more 2s, I get a 3 4 times. Now, because you cancel a 2 twice again, that meant, in theory, you could have recognized that 12 is 4 times 3, and 56 is 4 times 14. Uh, the 4 times 14 may be a little bit tricky to see. Um, but if you'd noticed that, you would have gotten the 3 14s as well. Okay. Now, neither of these is actually how we do this problem. It gives you a correct answer. But what I would have done instead is once I get this 4 times 3, over 7 times 8, what we did up here is we multiplied these together, and then we kind of split it back apart right away. 
Well, what I'm going to say is don't sort of push it together just to pull it back apart. Try and look for simplifications here. So if you do that, what I can do is I can replace this 8 here with 4 times 2, and then the 4s cancel right away. So it's a little bit harder to see that 4 and 56, but I should be able to see the 4 and 8 at least much more easily. Now I look at 3 on top, that's a prime. 3 won't go into 7, 3 won't go into 2, so I know that my answer will be 3 14 So this blue method here, that's really what I would have done. So the idea is you simplify sort of before you do the multiplication. Okay, next one. We have 3 fifths times 9 tenths. Let me rewrite this for the space here. I'm going to look for simplification. I'm actually do this here. 3 won't factor with 5 and 10, or doesn't have a common factor with 5 and 10. 9 is 3 times 3. So the only factors on top really are 3s, prime, to various powers. That won't go into 5 and 10. So nothing's going to simplify. So all I need to do is 3 times 9 on top, 5 times 10 on the bottom. That gives me 27 over 50, and that's my answer. Okay, next one, we have 8 times 8 over 75 times 25 over 64. I'm going to get 8 times 25 over 75 times 64. Now, again, you could multiply the top and bottom. 8 times 25, I think about that as 8 quarters here. Let's just see what would happen. It's like 8 quarters here, or 8 25 cent coins. So that would be 4 of those to a dollar, so that would be $2 or 200 cents. 75 times 64, that's a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to multiply that off to the side. I get 24 times, up a little bit, well, it should be fine. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 2 is 30. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 3 is 45. And I get 4,800. So what you would get is 200 over 4,800. Now, what I can do, because these end in two zeros, this is 2 times 100 over 48 times 100. The hundreds will cancel out. And then the 2 is 2 times 1. The 48 is 2 times 24. And so I end up with 124. So this method works just fine. However, I had to do this multiply 75 times 64. There's a way to avoid doing that. So what you can do is you can keep the 8 times 25 on the top, and then you look at this 75 and this 25. So 25 is like the number of cents in one quarter. 75 cents would be three quarters. That means 75 cents, or 75 is 3 times 25. So I can replace the 75 with 3 times 25. The 64 has a common factor of the 8. In fact, 64 is 8 times 8. It's a multiplication fact you should know. Now look what happens. The 25 will cancel, one on top, one on bottom. The 8s will cancel, one on top, one on bottom. It has to be one on top, one on the bottom. What I'm left with, on the bottom is 3 times 8, that's 24. On the top, I'm left with nothing, so that's a 1. So this green method gets me the same 1 24th. It's just a lot simpler to do. Okay. Next one, we've got 3 fourths divided by 7 lengths. When you see fraction division, what you do is you keep the first one, keep the first fraction, and then you multiply by the reciprocal of this second one. Now this reciprocal is you flip this fraction over. So that 7 elevenths becomes 11 sevenths. So I would tend to, with the division, just rewrite this like that first, and then just treat it like a multiplication problem. Now here, if I look, there are no common factors from the top and bottom. So I'm just going to multiply across. 3 times 11 is 33. 4 times 7 is 28. I'm just going to leave my answer as 33 28. It's an improper fraction, but that's okay. Next up, we have 3 7 divided by 5 14. So that's 3 7 times 14 fifths. Now, here, what I'm going to do is 3 times this 14, because I see this 7 on the bottom, I'm going to write the 14 as 7 times 2. And then I have 7 times 5 on the bottom. The sevens cancel, and I'm left with six fifths as my answer. Next one. So this is two fifths times 
times, flip the second one because it's a divide, so it's multiplied by 9 fourths. Now what I can do, now let's write this cancelization a little bit differently. What I'll see some people do, write in place is cross out this 4 and say there's the 2 there. So write that 4 is 2 times 2, and then I cross out the 2s. And so what I get is I just have a 9 on top and then a 5 times a 2 on the bottom. That's 9 times. So another thing people do, just kind of to write this down differently, is when you have 2 fifths times 9 fourths, what I'll often see is people cross out the 2, cross out the 4, and then write a 2 here. So they really don't write really this 2 and that 2. Well, they don't write the 2 that gets crossed out. And so then you end up with 9 tenths. That's fine. One thing I don't like about that method is let's try something a little bit different here. Let's suppose that you had, how about um, 3 eighths times 5 sixths. Here. So what I'll see people do then is they'll cross out this 3, they'll cross out that 6, and what you're left with is a 2. Here. The idea being that this 6 was really 3 times 2. When you crossed out the 6, you really crossed out the 3. So you sort of divided the top 3 by 3 and you divided the 6 by 3, you get 2. So that'll give you 5 sixteenths. Um, what I worry about with this is I see commonly a mistake where people will write a 3 here because you're thinking divide by 3. So it's not the thing you divided by, it's what's left over after you do that. So that's a lot of times why I like to write the 2 and 2, and then when I cancel, I'm just getting the same number twice. So I can get rid of the 4 first. So what I would have done here, if I wanted to do this in place, is I would have crossed out the 6, written 3 times 2 for the 6, and then crossed out the 3. So the first step is cross out the 6 and replace 6 with 3 times 2. That's the same thing. And then you can cancel a 3 on top and bottom, and then you get 5 sixteenths, and I just sort of have, I think, less chance of forgetting that this is a 2 instead of a 3. Okay, now on to fraction addition. Um, here we're going to add two fractions. With fraction addition, the biggest thing we need here is really fractions with the same denominator. There's the same bottom. We're given that already. So what you do, if you have the same denominator here, you just keep that denominator, and you just add the numerators and tops. And so 7 plus 1, this is just 8. You want to simplify that, but nothing simplifies. Okay, next one, subtraction. Same thing as addition, except we subtract instead of add. We have that common denominator, 5. Our numerator is going to be 3 minus 2, so that's 1 fifth. So 3 minus 2 is 1, we get our 5 on the bottom, won't simplify. Okay, so first one we're getting a little bit of work, we have to find a common denominator. So we have different denominators here, so we want to make these have the same denominator. So the trick here is I think 12 and 3, what's a number that's a multiple of 12 and a multiple of 3? So one thing you can check right away is that 3 times 4 will give me 12, and so what I can do is I can replace the 2 thirds with 2 thirds times 4 over 4. Now 4 over 4, that's 1, so I'm multiplying 2 thirds by 1, that's not changing anything. And what I get then is the 5 12, and then when I do my multiplication, I get 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12. Now, that gives us 12 here as the same denominator. And so I get 5 plus 8 over 12, which gives me 13 twelfths. One caution here is that it's a good habit to simplify as you go along. Note, when you got to the 4 fourths, you could have just canceled the 4 and 4. That would have given you 2 thirds. But the point here is to sort of unsimplify the 2 thirds to get a denominator of 12. Again, some people might be tempted to simplify this 8 twelfths, but a goal for this for the time for sort of an intermediate step we have to get these 12 in, so we don't actually want to simplify that. Okay, subtraction, same thing. We want to find a common denominator. Here, 4 times 5 will give me 20, so 20 works as my common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 5 of 1 fourth. Top and bottom of 1 fourth by 5. That gives me 17 twentieths minus 5. 1 times 5 is 5, 4 times 5 is 20. And I'm going to subtract 17 minus 5 over 20. That gives me 12 over 20. 
And now this is, I think, the first example we've had of this sort of phenomenon here in fractions is that if we add or subtract, you might have to simplify the answer in the end. And there's nothing that you really could have done before that to simplify that out. So I just want to look here. Do 12 and 20 have a common factor? The answer is yes. 12 I can write as 4 times 3. 20 is 4 times 5. I cancel the 4s, and I'm left with 3 fifths. Okay, next one, 18 and 12. So we want to come up with a common multiple of 18 and 12. Uh, there's various procedures to find these. One thing that I actually think about here in reality is you get used to the kinds of things that show up and you see these and you just kind of know without thinking. One thing you could do is take, say, the bigger one, 18, bigger denominator, and start doing multiples of this. So 18 is there, 18 times 2 is 36, and then I think, will 12 go into 18? No. Will 12 go into 36? Yes. So that means 36 is our least common denominator. Um, so what I'll get here is 13 over 18. Now I have to multiply the top and bottom by something to get 36. 18 times 2 is 36, so I'm going to choose 2. I'm going to multiply 13 18 by 2 over 2. 5 twelfths. I need to get 36 on the bottom. 12 times 3 will give me 36. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3. And now what I'm left with is two fractions that both have a denominator 36. First one is 13 times 2, that's 26. Second one is 5 times 3, that's 15. And so I get the same denominator. Let's do, whoops, not 26, that's 25. Sorry, did that twice in a row. Not 25, it's 26 plus 15. 26 plus 15, that's 41 36. Next one. 4 fifteenths, 1 tenth. Again, 30 is my common, or 30 is my common denominator. Very similar setup to the previous one. Where it's 2 times 15 gives me 30. And 1, or sorry, and 3 times 10 gives me 30. So I get 4 fifteenths, I multiply by 2 over 2. No, 2 over 2 is 1. I'm not changing that in value. It just looks different. 1 tenth times 1. 3 over 3 is 1. Not changing the value, just making it look different. And so what I get, 4 times 2 is 8, 15 times 2 is 30, 1 times 3 is 3, 10 times 3 is 30. So you get 8 minus 3 over 30, that's 5 over 30. And now what I can do is I can rewrite this, this 5 I'll write as 5 times 1, the 30 is 5 times 6 here, the 5's cancel, and I end up with 1 6. So 4 fifteenths minus a tenth. That's one sixth. Okay, so in 17, we've got a multiplication problem. It's not written that way, but when we have 12 and then the 5 sixths in parentheses, there's no operation here. That's an implied multiplication. So this is the same thing as 12 times 5 sixths. So we have whole number times fraction. The way we want to multiply these is we're going to convert the whole number to a fraction. So that 12, we can turn into 12 over 1 as a fraction. Any whole number is itself over 1. And then we want to multiply these, so that's 12 times 5 over 1 times 6. And now we can simplify. This 12 is 2 times 6, and then I can cancel a 6 from the top and the bottom. And I get 2 times 5 is 10 over 1. And then when our answer is over 1, 10 over 1, that's going to just simplify to 10. So our answer here, 12 times 5, 6, that's just 10. Here. Okay, next one. We're going to add three fractions. So this, or add two fractions, subtract one. Essentially, it's three adds here. Um, <clears throat> you've got some options here. You could add the first two together, get a result, subtract the third, um, or some do some, some pair of addition or subtraction and then subtract, you know, work with the other one. Um, what I'm going to tend to do is try and do these all three at once, though. So I'm going to look at 3, 5, and 15 and find a common multiple of those. Well, 15 is actually a multiple of both 5 and 3. So I can write all three fractions with the denominator 15. So what I'm going to get is the 2 thirds. I need to multiply by 5 over 5. Again, I'm choosing 5 because 3 times 5 gives me 15 plus the one-fifth, 
I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 3. 5 times 3 give me 15. And then I can just leave the 4 fifteenths as it is. Then we're going to get 2 times 5 is 10 fifteenths. 1 times 3 is 3 fifteenths. And then minus 4 fifteenths. So we have 3 uh, fractions all with denominator 15. We can get a 15 as our common denominator. And then it's just 10 plus 3 minus 4 on top. 10 plus 3 is 13, minus 4 is 9, so we get 9 fifteenths. And then we need to simplify, 9 and 15 have a factor of 3, so the 9 is 3 times 3, the 15 is 3 times 5, we can cancel with 3 from the top and bottom, and we get 3 fifths. Here, so 2 thirds plus 1 fifth minus 4 fifteenths gives us 3 fifths. Next one. We've got 5 twelfths plus 1 third minus 2 fifths. So again, you could find a common denominator here. That would be 60. That would work. Something I'm going to try that's a little bit different is to just add the first two here. Um, what I'm hoping here is that I'll get a simpler common denominator and that this will simplify down. I don't have to go all the way to 60 here. So let's see what happens. I'm really going to focus on these first two. So 5 twelfths and 1 third, my denominators are 12 and 3. Their least common multiple is actually 12. So 5 twelfths I can keep. 1 third I'm going to multiply by 4 over 4. And then I like to just write this whole expression out again with the minus 2 fifths here. And that's just going to kind of go along for the ride for the time being. Okay. Now we get 5 twelfths plus 1 times 4 is 4 twelfths. Just keep the minus 2 fifths. And now 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. See, that's going to be 5 plus 4 is 9 twelfths minus 2 fifths. And now, when I look at that 9 twelfths, I see the 9 is 3 times 3. The 12 is 3 times 4. And I can cancel these 3's. So I had a little bit of simplification here, and I have 3 fourths minus 2 fifths. And now my common denominator would be 4 times 5, which is 20. So I'm going to multiply 3 fourths by 5 over 5. I'm going to multiply 2 fifths by 4 over 4. And so what we get down here and sort of have this equals wrap around, I get 3 times 5 is 15. 4 times 5 is 20, 15 twentieths. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 4 is 8 twentieths. And then I get 15 minus 8 over 20. That's just 7 twentieths, which will not simplify. So there's our answer. Now, an alternative approach would have been to find one common denominator at the start. That would have been 60. And so if you wanted to do that, I want to multiply the top and bottom by 5 here. 12 times 5 would give you 60. The 1 third, I need to multiply the bottom by 20 to get 60. So multiply the top by 20. And the 2 fifths, I need to multiply the bottom by 12, so the top by 12. And so that would give me 5 times 5 is 25 sixtieths, plus 1 times 20 is 20 sixtieths, minus 2 times 12 is 24 sixtieths. So I get 25 plus 20 minus 24 over 60. Um, a little tip on simplifying this, I would do the 25 minus 24 first. 25 minus 24 is 1, and then plus 20 that gives me 21 over 60. You could do 25 plus 20 is 45, minus 24 is uh, also 21. But I see 25 and 24 are so close, I might as well subtract that first. It just keeps the numbers a little smaller. Now, the goal would be to find that uh, common factor here. There would be a 3. 21 is 3 times 7. 60 is 3 times 20. I cancel the 3s, and then I get a 7 20. It's same answer, just a little bit different approach. And you can see the numbers to work out slightly differently, but you get the same answer in the end. Okay. Whoops. Next one here. We've got 3 and 2 fifths. It's a mixed number multiplied by 2. So when I have a mixed number times a whole number, there's a couple ways we can approach this. One that I'm going to tend to do is convert this mixed number into a fraction. And the way that I do that is I take my denominator times the whole number, the 5 times the 3, and then I add 2, and then I keep the same denominator. I do sort of 5 times 3 plus 2. Kind of think of that as going sort of in a circle 
Okay, so that's clockwise here. So that's really three and two fifths. I'm gonna multiply that by two. That two, because we're gonna end up doing fraction multiplication, I'm gonna write as two over one. Five times three is 15, plus two is 17 fifths, times two over one. And then 17 times two is 34, and we get five. So that'd be one way to do this problem. Another way is we can kind of treat these, or the three and two fifths, as a mixed number. To do that, I'm going to get three and two fifths is three plus two fifths. I'm going to multiply that by two. So the three and two fifths is really hidden plus there. Now, when we have an expression like this, where we have two things added multiplied by something else, this two distributes to both of these terms. So what you get here is the two gets multiplied by the three, so three times two, plus the two also gets multiplied by the two fifths. Here. Now, if you look at this, three times two, that's six. Two times two fifths, well, that's two fifths times two over one. So that's six plus two times two is four fifths. And you could rewrite it as six and four fifths. Here. So you can kind of do this as a mixed number and work things this way. Note, five times six is 30 plus four gives you that 34 there. So these are the same number, just as an improper fraction or a mixed number. So I would accept either of these answers here. Um, there's no context to what we're talking about. So it depends on what you're going to do with this number next, really, as to which one is probably more useful here. Next one. Um, we can play the same game here. There's sort of two ways to do this. One is I'm going to write my 7 as 7 over 1 and then convert our mixed number to a fraction. So it's going to be 28 times the whole number part, 1, plus 3 over 28. So that's then 7 over 1 times 28 plus 3 is 31 28s. Now, here's a nice case where what I want to do is recognize that this 28 is 7 times 4, and then I can cancel that 7. If you do that, you can see that what you're left with is 31 twice. Okay, other method, we have seven multiplied by one plus three twenty-eighths here. And now we can distribute this seven to both terms of the one plus three twenty-eighths. So that's seven times one plus seven times three twenty-eighths. And so what we get, let's see, 7 times 1 is 7, whoops, not a times, plus, you know, and we have 7 over 1 times 3 over 28. Again, I can simplify this, 28 is 7 times 4, cancel the 7s, and we're left with 3 fourths. So this is 7 plus 3 fourths, and the way we tend to write that as a mixed number is 7 and 3 fourths. We can check these are the same again, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 3 is 31. So either method really works here. Okay, next one, whoops. We've got division with a mixed number. This one, I'm pretty much going to go um, to improper fractions here. Um, again, there's going to be ways where you can approach this as a mixed number, but it's gonna get kind of complicated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my eight is eight over one. And I'm gonna divide this by five times three is 15 plus 1 is 16 fifths. So we have 8 over 1 divided by 16 fifths. And then division for fractions, we need to do 8 over 1 times, flip the 16 fifths, gives me 5 sixteenths. And now I'm going to try and simplify before I multiply. This 16 is 8 times 2. Notice the 8 up here. Cancel those, and I get 5 halves. So 8 divided by 3 and 1 fifth is 5 halves. Next one, um, addition. Now there's a couple ways, addition with mixed numbers, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you could, here, convert these improper, or sorry, convert these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So 7 times 5 is 35, plus 2 is 37 sevenths. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is seven halves here. And then you could go and find a common denominator. That would be 14. So the 37 sevenths, I need to multiply the bottom by two to get 14. So I'm going to multiply the top by two. 
the seven halves, I need to multiply the, let's see, the bottom by seven and the top by seven to get 14 on the bottom. And what you get here is 74 fourteenths plus 49 fourteenths. This will give us something over 14. Let's just do 74 plus 49 up here. We get a 3, 1. We get 123. We get 123 fourteenths. Now, there's a question of will this simplify? Well, what I can look at here, and think off to the side, 14 is 2 times 7. And so if anything simplifies, it's either going to be the 2 or the 7 because these are both prime and won't split up further. So 123 is odd, so I know a 2 won't cancel. So the question is, will a 7 go into 123? Um, I'm not quite sure about that because I don't know my multiplication multiples of 7 up to that. So let's just do the division and see what happens. Uh, let's see, 7 goes into 12 once. 12 minus 7 is 5. Bring down a 3. 7 times 7 would give you 49. And I get a remainder of 4, which I could write as 4 sevenths. But in any case, I didn't get a whole number here which means there is not a factor of 7 in 123, so we are done. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the next question here and show you where this method is not very nice here, um, and then we'll go and pick up another method where we can do this one and the next one in sort of a more reasonable fashion. So now if I try and do this next problem in the same manner, so we've got sort of bigger numbers, what I'm going to get is 7 times 1845 plus 2 over 7 multiplied by 3412 times 2. Well, let's write that the way we've been to be consistent with it. Write it as 2 times 3412. It doesn't matter what order I write the multiplication in. So let's just be consistent. Over 2. So I get this big mess here. And now, in principle, you could multiply this out and this would work. But we're starting to get to numbers that are getting, you know, just not fun here. So we want to do another method to add mixed numbers. To do that, I'm going to illustrate that up here first on number 23 here. So what I'm going to do is sort of do a column setup. I'm going to do 5 and 2 sevenths plus 3 and 1 half. So when I add those, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these fraction parts separately. So this is going to be like a column, like a ones column, a tens column, but then there's this fraction column. So I'm going to add off to the side 2 sevenths plus 1 half. So a lot of times what I might do is say the 2 sevenths, I would be able to do 2 sevenths plus 1 half. My common denominator is 14. So I need to multiply 2 sevenths top and bottom by 2. The 1 half I multiply by 7 over 7. That gives me 4 fourteenths plus 7 fourteenths. That's 11 fourteenths. So what that tells me is 2 sevenths plus 1 half, that's 11 fourteenths, and then the 5 plus 3, that's 8. So this method, I get this 123 fourteenths, I get 8 and 11 fourteenths. Uh, we might check if that's really the same thing. Uh, one way you could do that is do the 123. Well, let's do it this way. I'm going to divide, that would work out. Let's just do 14 times 8 plus 11. Now, I have to do 14 times 8 here. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 3. That's 112. 112, if you add 11, you get 3, 2, 1. It does check out to give you the 123 fourteenths. So this method is a little bit simpler. This thing in blue here, you know, it's still doable, though. I had to do a little bit of calculations, but it's not that bad. And generally, if these whole numbers aren't that big, it, sort of either method is okay. Now, in this one down here, though, this sort of green column method is really the one that's going to be a lot more useful. So there what we do is we just set up 1845 and 2 sevenths plus 3412 and 1 half. And we add these. We do the 2 sevenths plus 1 half. We can just reuse this calculation. We have to sort of do that. We get 11 fourteenths. 5 plus 2 is 7. 4 plus 1 is 5. 8 plus 4 is 12. 1, 2, 5. So this is 5,257 and 11 fourteenths. So I can tackle this one fairly efficiently, where I don't have to do the 7 times 1845, um, multiply that out, get some number here, multiply that out, get some huge number. I can avoid that, sort of treating these mixed numbers as mixed numbers. Okay, you can do the same thing with subtraction. 
um, 2 and 1 third minus 1 and 5 6, I could um, convert these to improper fractions. So let's do that. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1, that's 7 thirds. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11 6. Common denominator here is 6. So I get 7 thirds times 2 over 2 minus 11 6. That's 14 6 minus 11 6. That's 3 6 which is 3 times 1 over 3 times 2. 3's cancel, and my answer is just a half. Okay, now the column method, a little bit different. 2 and 1 third minus 1 and 5 sixth here. Now this is a subtraction, but we're just going to subtract. We do 1 third minus 5 sixth. So one thing we can do is multiply top and bottom of 1 third by 2. So a lot of times I'll just cross that out and say that's 2 sixth. But now, what happens is I have 2 6 minus 5 6. 2 6 is smaller. So we need to make this 2 6 bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to borrow. So from the 2, I'm going to take a whole 1. So 2 becomes 1. And then this 2 6, I'm going to add something. Um, I'm going to do an intermediate step, which I think makes this make a little more sense and probably have you make fewer errors. I'm going to replace the 2 6 with 1 and 2 6. So I've got 1 and 2 6. Now 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2, that's 8 6. Now what I did is this 2 6, I added the bottom, which is 6. So that 1 is 6 6. Effectively, I just added 6 to that numerator. Now I have 8 6 minus 5 6. That's 3 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. I don't need to write that as a fraction. 3 6 is 3 times 1 over 3 times 2. 3's cancel, and you get the 1 half that way. So either method works here. Here, I'd probably do this blue thing. Um, what's really nice about the green method, though, we'll see in the next question, is it sort of generalizes to bigger whole numbers fairly readily. So here, I don't really want to do 3 times 14, 78 plus 1, and 6 times 324 plus 5. It gets sort of big numbers, so I don't really want to convert these to fractions. And so instead of doing that, I'm going to do 14, 78, and 1 third minus 324 and 5 6. And then the 1 third is smaller than the 5 6. Let's write the 1 third is 2 6, so we can see 2 is smaller than 5. I borrow from the 8, get a 7, so I took 1 here, and that changes the 2 6 to 1 and 2 6. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8 6. 8 6 minus 5 6 is 3 6, and now I just have a whole number subtraction problem. 7 minus 4 is 3, 7 minus 2 is 5, uh, 4 minus 3 is 1, and the 1 comes down. Now this 3, 6, I need to simplify. That's a half. And so my answer is 1,153 and a half. Here. So not so bad here. You notice the difference between this and the previous question here is really, well, the difference really is just the whole number of parts got bigger. And in terms of subtraction, that's not really that difficult to deal with here. If you'd gone to fractions in this blue method, it would have made things a lot more complicated. OK, now we've got some order of operations sort of with fractions and some simplification problems. <clears throat> a lot of these can be sort of more simply done if you do them sort of in the proper way. So what I'm going to start with is 5 6 here. I've got plus 3 and 1 6 times 2 and 1 8. The first thing I need to do is this multiply. So order of operations says do the multiply, all the multiplies and divides before the adds. So I'm going to have to multiply these two mixed numbers. Um, what I'm going to do is convert these to fractions. So 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1, that makes this 19 6. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 1 makes this 17 8. And now I'm going to do this multiply before I do this add. Now, what I'm going to get here is 5 over 6 plus, I'm just going to leave this for now, is 19 over 7 times 6 times 8. So I don't really want to multiply these out because not doing that will help me find my least common denominator. So I've got a 6 and a 6, so this is sort of missing a factor of 8, so I need to multiply by 8 on top and bottom. So in general, I kind of pulled off on doing these multiplications until I need to because maybe I can get by without doing them. So here what I get is 5 over 6 times 8 over 8 plus 19 times 17 over 6 times 8. And what that gives me here, let's see, 5 times 8, that's 40. 
over 6 times 8 is 48, plus 19 times 17. A couple ways to do this. One is just multiply out. Nine, 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 6 is 13. 1 times 19 is 19. I get a 3, 2, 1. That's 323. Whoops. 323 over 48. Um, another method that you could have used here um, is when you do 19 times 17 is to take 17 times 20. You get a 0 from the 0. 2 times 7 is 4, 1. 2, that's 340. But this is 20 17s. You only need a 19 17. So you can subtract off 117 from there. Let's see, that was a 4. And I can borrow from the 4, be a 3, 10, 3. And I get my 323 that way. So this sometimes is a little bit of a trick. You might be able to accomplish this one in your head here if you get used to that. Okay, now I get two fractions of the same denominator. I add the numerators. That gives me 363 over 48. And I'm going to look for any common factors. I know that there's a factor of 3 on the top. So one rule for checking for a factor of 3 is you add the digits. 3 plus 6 plus 3. Let's see, that's 9 plus 3 is 12. And then if that 12, if that sum of the digits is a multiple of 3, the original number must be a multiple of 3. In this case, that's not so hard to tell because 3 can get multiplied by each digit independently. There's a factor of each digit independently and kind of divide digit-wise works out. So 3 times 121 gives me 363. 48 works out to be 3 times 16. The threes cancel. 16 I know is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the only prime factor on the bottom is a 2 and the top is even. So that won't work. Alternatively, if you recognize 121 as 11 squared, the only prime factor on top is 11 and there's no factor of 11 on the bottom. So my answer here is 121 16 next one okay so another kind of biggish problem here um, order of operations here says basically what i need to do before i do adds and subtracts is i need to take this block here simplify that block down and then this sort of term or block and simplify that down here as well so i can do both of these and then when i'm done i'm going to add them or well, subtract and then add so a 10 to order of operations split things up with adds and subtracts add and subtract sort of each component and then sort of work together what turns out is i can do sort of one step on each of these independently because i'm not going to combine them until i add so if i just do one step on a time at a time sort of on each it'll work out just fine so what i get is three minus now this one i have to do what's in parentheses first so it's one half times one eighth that divide by one fourth is multiplied by four over one now this one half cubed that's one half times one half times one half. So that's one half times itself three times. Three minus here, uh, let's see, the eight becomes a four times two. And then I can cancel the fours. I'm left with one half times one half. Plus, uh, let's see, with three I can do one times one times one is one. Two times two times two is two times two is four times two is eight. Note that 8 is really 2 to the 3rd here. So you could have also seen 1 half to the 3rd. There's another rule where this is 1 to the 3rd over 2 to the 3rd. Really, it's the same thing as this, just written down a little differently. Um, so I get this expression. And now I have to do this multiplication before I can worry about the adds and subtracts. So I get 3 minus 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 eighth. Okay. Now I've got three, whoops, three quantities here. I need to find a common denominator here. Um, so that's going to end up being eight. So the three I can write as three over one. But then to get that common denominator of eight, I'm going to multiply by eight over eight. And the one fourth, I need to multiply by two over two to get me an eight. I just have the one eighth. Three times eight is 24. Over eight. No, 24 divided by 8 gives me the 3, so I can kind of check that. A fraction is really a division. Minus 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus an eighth. And so I get 24 minus 2 plus 1 over 8. I get 22, 23 over 8. 
So there's my answer, 23 over 8 here. Could convert that to a mixed number if you wanted to, but I don't think that's necessary unless you know what you're going to do with the number. Next one. So I have 1 half minus 1 half squared plus 1 half cubed here. So what I'll get here, again, I'm going to really split this up into sort of three terms, I'll call them, these sort of boxes, here, and they're split up by my adds and subtracts. So I can kind of work on these independently. So I have 1 half minus 1 half squared is 1 half times 1 half plus the 1 half cubed is 1 half times itself three times. So what I get is 1 half, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now here again my common denominator is 8, so I'm going to do 1 half, multiply the top and bottom by 4, 1 fourth, multiply the top and bottom by 2, 1 eighth, I'll keep the 1 eighth, and what I get is 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, and then I get plus 1 eighth. So now I have all 8s as my common denominator. And then I get 4 minus 2 plus 1 over 8. 4 minus 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And my answer here is 3 eighths. Okay. Next one. So I have 17 25 times 5 6 squared plus 1 third. So again, I really, really view this as I've got this box here, this term here, I need to simplify that down and then add to this term. So what I'm going to do, to multiply this one, is I have to do the 5 6 squared first. So I'm going to do 17 25 here, and then I have to do 5 6, so it's times 5 6 times 5 6. Really, I need to do this multiply first, but when I've got three things multiplied together, I can multiply them in any order, so I don't need to worry about the parentheses. Plus one third. And now on this term, I have my 17 25ths. Um, actually, before I do that, you know, I could do 5 times 5, that would work out, but I noticed something here. This 25 is 5 times 5. And then what I can do is take one of these 5s and cancel one of the 5s on top, so one on the bottom with one on the top, another 5 on top with another 5 on the bottom, and what I'm left with is 17, and then 6 times 6 is 36, plus a third. Now, I need to add two fractions, so I need a common denominator. So this is 17, 36, plus, I have 1 third, 3 times 12 would give me 36, so I multiply the top and bottom by 12. And so now I get 1736 plus 1236. Common denominator is 36. 17 plus 12 is my numerator. 17 plus 12 works out to be 29. And my answer here is 2936. Okay. Here's the last one here. We've got 2 thirds times the quantity 1 half plus 1 fifth plus 8 and 1 half times 1 and 1 fifth. So again, I see this plus, and that really splits this expression into two terms here. That's really sort of what I'm seeing in my head, is I have these two terms here. Note there's a plus inside, but it's within parentheses here. So I need to actually work that down first. So let's start there. 2 thirds times, I'm going to keep this in parentheses. I need to add 1 half plus 1 fifth. Common denominator will be 10. I need to get 2 times 5 to give me 10 from the 1 half. So I'm going to apply top and bottom of 1 half by 5. The 1 fifth, I need to multiply the bottom by 2 to get to 10. Whoops. And so I need to multiply the top by 2. Now, you could just work this down and just keep the 8 and 1 half times 1 and 1 third. But again, these two sort of blocks here aren't going to mix with each other until we do the addition. So I can actually work on this at the same time, and that might save me some steps, some lines here. It's not really any work other than maybe I'm writing less down as I go along, less copying of the same thing over and over again. So this part, what I'm going to do to multiply two mixed numbers, I'm going to convert these two improper fractions. So I do 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17 halves, 3 times 1 is 3, 
plus one is four thirds here. And now I'm just going to have to work on these sort of independently, which takes a little bit getting used to, sort of switching gears back and forth. In this one, one times five, that's five tenths, plus one times two is two tenths. Here, I can actually simplify. The four is two times two, and I can cancel a two, and then I have 17 times two is 34, and I just have a three at the bottom. Okay, so now I get two thirds times five plus two gives me seven tenths plus 34 thirds. Now I have a multiply, I still need to simplify this down. Um, before I do the multiply, I can do a little simplification. 10 is two times five, and then I can cancel the twos. I'm gonna write equals here. Note I'm sort of going line by line, but then I can sort of continue on here as well. Sometimes I'll do that to conserve space, particularly when this doesn't get quite so wide. A little bit not quite as wide here. What I'm left with is this expression. I have a seven on top. Now the bottom, I'm gonna just write as three times five because I know I'm gonna be looking for a common denominator. You could multiply that out and it probably wouldn't matter, but this is a little bit simpler to think of this way. So I get seven over three times five over 34 times three. And now I can just see in the second fraction, I have the three, but I'm missing the five. So what I need to do, let's go straight down here. So seven over three times five, I'm gonna multiply that out now. That's 15 plus 34 over three times five over five, where five is sort of this missing five from this denominator. So what I get here is seven fifteenths plus five times 34, that's gonna be 170 over 15. So when I did five times 34, one thing I did is I did 34 divided by two is 17 and then multiplied by 10. So if I want to divide by five, this may be a little trick. If I want to do x, any number, divided by, or sorry, not divided by, multiplied by 5, what you can do, I mean, this is a different order than I explained it, but you can do x times 10, divide by 2. So I can multiply by 10, that'd be 340, divide by 2 is 170. So that's one thing that would work. Or you could just do 34 times 5, 0, 2, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. You get the 170. This 10 divided by 2 thing, what I think about is 34 times 5 is I have 34 nickels here. I could really divide by 2 first. I mean, you could write this, whoops. You could write this also as really x divided by 2 and then do the multiply by 10. And sort of switch the order here. Um, I could do 34 divided by 2 is 17, sort of things. 34 nickels, I sort of split them in groups of two. That gives me 17 groups of two, each worth 10 cents, so 170 total. Another way to think about that. Okay, or you just do the 34 times five here. Now what I get, I have the same denominator, so I do seven plus 170, that's 177 over 15. And now I wanna think here, can I simplify this? So I have a little bit of trouble, and that 177 is not a number I'm used to working with. 15 I'm a lot more comfortable with. So I'm gonna look at factors of 15. So 15 here is 3 times 5. I'm going to think, can 3 or 5 divide 177 evenly? So 5 won't go into 177 equally because the multiples of 5 end in a 5 or a 0. 3, there's this trick where I add up the digits of 177. So 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 7 is 15. 15 is a multiple of 3, and that means that 177 will be a multiple of 3. Now it doesn't tell me what the multiple of 3 or what the sort of 177 divided by 3 is, but I know that I'm going to be able to write 177 as 3 times some whole number, and 15 is 3 times 5. So to find that whole number, I'm going to do a division. 177 divided by 3. 3 goes into 17 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15. 7 minus 5 is 2. Bring down my 7. And 3 goes into 27 9 times. 3 times 9 is 27. I get my remainder of 0 that we sort of claimed could occur, or would occur. So you get a 59. Now the threes cancel, and my answer at the end here is 59 fifths. And now we are done with this worksheet here.